so basically, though, talking about backups, obviously. A um, couple of my things. Backup Pro Security. Uh, export it. Pretty big ones. Buy my stuff. Thanks. <laughs> 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 All right. So big question, though, when it comes to, to, to backing up a website, is just really kind of what is a backup? And with Expression Engine, Expression Engine is obviously PHP and MySQL. So a backup really is just those core components. But mostly it's all about the files. If you have the files, then pretty much everything else kind of falls into place. And in fact, even the database itself is traditionally in a backup, just another file. But we'll go ahead and, and consider the database being a separate thing. Um, you, you really need those two things for any PHP website, database and files. Anything else is just kind of specific to your individual use case, but it's always going to come down to the database and files, and the database is nine times out of ten going to be a file. I've seen a uh, uh, compiled out version of a database once when you go straight into the, to the dump. Don't recommend it. Always do a, do a straight-up SQL dump. It also has to be archived. You need to be able to compress it down, make copies of it, keep it someplace, and have different revisions and different versions. But it has to be kind of a, a single, at least in, in far as, as I'm concerned, a single point of access. Give me this one zip file that has everything, and everything else is fine. And then there, there's obviously making it available. If you have backups and you don't actually have access to them, it's obviously like the worst, most worthless thing ever. It's like having a great car with no gas, you know? So always try and make it available. And I'll get more into, into what I mean by available in a minute. But mostly it comes down to redundancy. But we'll, we'll get more into that in just a second. Lots of things that a backup shouldn't contain, though. You obviously shouldn't throw in anything with config files, anything that has sensitive data, SSH keys, S3 access tokens, any OAuth stuff. I always try and keep those out of it in the event that my backup archive gets compromised. If somebody gets into my system and they can run rampant, they may get the files, but that's not really a big concern because obviously from a security standpoint, if the files don't have anything in there, no, no access points, then you're generally fine. I mean, it sucks they get, that they got the database file or the, the backup files, but you haven't really lost anything. But as soon as you start throwing in the config data, then they've got your MySQL access, they can access out your S3 stuff. Any of that info shouldn't be a part of it. More though, it's... It, the, the things that are specific to your specific clients and the things that your specific project have, have to deal with. Things like, um, how can I put this? Uh, PCAP files or any, anything that basically is, is all about your specific client that has any sort of a, an avenue for security attacks. Try and keep that out, especially if it's not something that's gonna change. Because really with, with a backup, if you have, uh, how can I put this? A lot of people seem to get confused with backups because they think that they have Git. If you have Git or version control, then you're kind of covered. The downside with that, though, is it doesn't actually have everything. Because obviously, once you deploy a site, there's going to be content changes. There's going to be system things. The clients are going to do some stupid thing and upload a file or modify a template that your Git isn't going to have. So I don't, I don't really like to think of it in terms of a backup solution. It does have your files and you can kind of get back to a point of safety, but version control isn't really it. And for a lot of it, the sensitive info, if you do have a uh, proper development stuff, you can get back that info fairly easily with, without much real complaint. So that's just kind of my two cents. You don't want to have it be a proprietary format. Um, by this, I mean any sort of a format where you need their special program to get access to your files. I don't know if um, anybody had heard the e podcast, but I broke out like a small little anecdote where I got really hosed on that bad one day where um, a company I was working with, we had a Microsoft backup solution. And the only way to get the, the access to the files was to use their specific program on their specific platform and hardware. So even though like the server died and there was no way for us to get that specific server specs anymore, we had backups, but because of the way that that backup program worked, we couldn't get access to it. And we had to basically start over scratch, which is really, I, I don't know if anyone's ever had to go through that, but it was basically like, we were covered. We really thought we were covered. 
we, we had done everything by the books except for that. And I mean, it was, it's, it's like looking inside your house and knowing you can get in, but you just can't horrible, horrible feeling. So, uh, various different ways to take a, a backup, especially with any system, but specifically with expression engine and go over some of those avenues that are just specific to EE and mostly PHP tools. Um, a lot of you will probably be familiar with a lot of these, but, um, shell scripts. Shell scripts back in the day were like the tried and true way. Um, me coming up, that's how I did it. You'd go in there, you'd write a little bash script and just set it up on a cron and it would just go every day. These are great though. I mean, totally reliable. Anything to do with command line programming and, and writing bash scripts. I've, I've, if you write it up well, you'll rarely see it fail. It just, I mean, it's, it's a very tried and true way of doing things. They're extremely fast, efficient. They take care of business. Um, rarely will you see one hang where it just cut out the backup halfway through, unless the system's con specifically configured for it. But even that is kind of a rarity that I haven't seen all that much. Um, you can make it specific to all of your individual needs, built tailored exactly to how your client wants and their site is set up. So if you have something set up on like a load balancer and a static content server and then a database server, you can write one little shell script and have all three of those covered. It's really great. But there's obviously a bunch of cons. You need to have access to the command line and most web hosts don't really do that. Um, engine hosting, I think, just started doing it like a year ago, which is, we can talk about that all day, but I mean, it's just kind of weird. Uh, you, you, you need access and not that many places have it. You also need to know what you're doing. And command line stuff and bash programming, it's definitely a high level kind of a mechanism. It's not something you can just decide, I'm gonna write a backup script and then there you go. It's, uh, it's something to be taken with, with care. And the more specialized you do it, just like anything else, I mean, we build websites and obviously we've seen clients come in where they say, I just want to have this one little website and then it turns into this huge thing. That's kind of how shell scripting is to me. As it starts out, it, it, it's almost like, like Ruby. You go in there with a nice idea for a simple little, I'm going to write this neat little Ruby script. And then two weeks later, you're like managing this huge monstrosity of thousands of lines for special use cases and individual scenarios. And it just becomes extremely unwieldy. But with the pros, it's kind of tough to fight against if you can have access to CLI and you know what you're doing. The other one is the stuff that comes with the web host. Engine hosting, for example, another one, they give you backups by themselves. You sign up with them and they will take backups all day for you. Um, it's great. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Pretty much any of these, these platforms, if you use cPanel or WHM or Webmin or I mean, any of those things, they'll have a, a mechanism in there for you to take backups of your stuff. And it's, it's generally free. doesn't really cost anything. doesn't really take much effort. You just go in, you have a nice little web interface and you, you handle your stuff. And it's just there. And you don't have to do anything. It's literally you sign up for a hosting account and then nine times out of 10, you're going to have some sort of a backup solution in place. It's really not anything to worry about in terms of it being there. Offsite's a problem though. As, as I was saying in the beginning, availability is a big thing. And with any backup solution, redundancy is key. You, you've got to have backups of your backups of your backups. And with the web host provided stuff, they handle it all and they rarely give you access to it. It's not like they have hooks that you can jump into and say, you know, every time a backup's happened, send it over to S3 and then FTP one over to me. You can't do that. Kind of a problem. And probably the biggest reason or the, the, the biggest con with these is, I mean, it gives you everything. If you want a backup of your site or of your hosting account, that's what you're going to get is every single site, every single database, every email account, every FTP thing, everything. So when you want to restore, you've got to dig through all that stuff. And it may not sound like much, but when you've got a client breathing down your neck and you're trying to get everything up and going and you, you have to wait an hour for this huge, you know, 30 gigabyte zip file to, to extract itself and then dig through that and trying to it's it becomes a real big big pain but it is free and it is just there it just it, it'll always be able to work for you 
Then with Expression Engine, obviously, we have a pretty healthy ecosystem when it comes to individual backup add-ons. It's not just me. There are quite a few um, different add-on devs. I don't know very many of them. I know Tom, and I greatly respect him. So I know I, I have a lot of confidence that EE Harbor, or Safe Harbor, I think, is a decent solution. Never used it, but I do know Tom, and I think Tom's a stand-up guy. So um, have a lot of faith in what he can do. So this isn't just a plug of like buy Backup Pro, although you should totally buy Backup Pro. But um, you should, in my opinion, have a bit of, a, of an EE add-on backup solution. Prices range from free to, you know, a few bucks. I think both of them are 40 bucks, and I think another guy has one that's like 15, another guy has one that's 30. Um, but there, there are plenty of free options. Um, I have one, Safe Harbor has one, and I, I think that there are about three different free built specifically for expression engine backup add-ons so even if you don't have the investment for it there's no problem like there, there's no reason not to just grab a free one should be backup pro ish but hey go grab one of the other ones if you're into that sort of thing um great thing about these though is th they are specifically built for expression engine um the design principles and the methodology within the code and how it works and and how the strategies for backing up a site and the design of the code are all geared towards an expression engine site, I think, across the board. Which is, to, to me, a little bit better than, or I'm sorry, quite a bit better than, say, a command line script where it's very custom built towards that specific product and that specific project. By using an EE add-on, you get you as a developer of clients kind of get used to how one individually works. So you pick your favorite, you understand the bells and whistles, you understand the small little picadillos and the weirdnesses of, of how everything works. And it kind of becomes your tool of choice. Whereas all the other options, you're just kind of crossing your fingers a little bit. But just like everything else, this one too, um, no, well, okay, we'll we'll stick with this one. The the other good thing is a uh, community, expression engine community. Like these guys are killer. I mean, Angie just right away wanted to have a, a talk about backups and reached out and like here I am. It's not just me. I mean, anybody who's looking for help or support, obviously, I think we we can all kind of nod our heads in that the expression engine community kind of has our back more often than not, which is pretty killer. But you're at the mercy of the environment when it comes to the E add-ons. And th this, this is the only one con for the uh, E backup add-ons, but it's a big one. Like, don't, don't get confused by this. The big problem is that they run off of PHP. And anytime you do anything with PHP, you're stuck at how your host has set up and configured your PHP, which is a problem because PHP has a couple settings specifically that are just not conducive to having a solid backup system. Uh, one is a memory limit which is basically how much memory is available to each PHP process. And the problem with that in a backup solution is that backups can be huge. I mean, just huge, huge things. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Because like on your desktop, if you're going to make a zip file or something, you right click over, you say add to archive. And if it's a big file, it's going to take quite a while to do that. And that, the reason why is that it has to pull it up into memory. It has to compress it all out and then spit it back down onto the hard disk. But all of that goes into memory. So if you think about a backup add-on, they work exactly the same way. It has to pull it up in a memory and it clears itself out. And most of them are very efficient about it. But the more files you have, the larger your database is, all of these things add up. And eventually you can, in fact, run out of, out of uh, memory. And to be honest, that uh, memory and uh, the next one I'm going to talk about are my two biggest support requests when it comes to Backup Pro specifically, is that their server doesn't have enough memory available, or the, the other one is it doesn't have enough time available. PHP has a setting in there saying, how long can a script run? And the theory of it is, is great. It's actually a very sound theory. The idea of like, if you have a runaway script, if you wrote something bad, or if you're somebody like me who writes bad code once in a while, and it goes wild on your server, it can only go wild on your server for 60 seconds or 90 seconds or whatever the setting is, which is wonderful because if you suck, it just dies away and nobody's, you know, it just kind of goes away. But when you have a backup system or a backup system running on PHP, again, it depends on how many files you have and all this stuff adding up. So if you have a, a regular expression engine site, with maybe you know 10,000 additional HTML files and image files, that should run relatively smoothly. 
But if you have a PHP site with a thousand PDF files and each one's over five megs and you've got uh, MOV files that are a gig in size each and you're trying to back all this stuff up, it's going to take time. And eventually it'll time out is what it's called when it just times out. And it'll just, it'll die in the process, which is really bad for a backup. The last thing you want is a half finished backup. In fact, it's worse with the, the, uh, the add-ons are pretty much, um, and the, the command line stuff, specifically because those are writing to a binary format. And when you're writing to a binary format, and if it doesn't get to finish writing to that binary format, you have a corrupted file. You have a, a paperweight of just disk space, basically. It's not helping you, it's not doing anything. You can't extract files out of it, it is worthless. But you don't know about that. So it's very, very important that you, you really choose the, the proper solution for what your environment is. There are, without a doubt, even though I am the de developer of Backup Pro, where I wouldn't use Backup Pro for certain of my clients. It just really depends on what their setup is and what their needs are and how much stuff they're trying to do. And, and it really is, it, everyone always harps on this, especially in our community, but right tool for the job. And sometimes you've got to kind of go outside the architecture, but you need to. You need to absolutely just kind of look at your situation and let it kind of dictate the direction. There's one thing that everybody always messes up on, and I wanted to make sure that, that I, I made a point of bringing this up. You need to, to, to verify your backups. Kind of goes to what I was just talking about in terms of it failing out and you being none the wiser. It happens way, way more than most people would, would like to admit. What I mean by verify is every once in a while just run, run a drill, you know, pretend your site went down and you need to set it up. You take your backups and you just go through the entire process of verifying that you can get set up and get everything up and running smoothly with the backups that you have. So download them, extract them, set up a V host, set up a database, move all the files. I mean, open it up in a browser, log in, verify everything is kosher. Because sometimes things do go wrong, and it's a it's a bit of a problem, and it's not just limited to to the expression engine add-ons. Any time you have a backup, you just need to to make sure that you have it set up right. And the only way to do that is to quite literally install the site and to do a full QA. And it's not something that can be just kind of put off to the side or waited on it really is like i feel like i'm kind of harping on this at this point but it's it's very very important is what i'm trying to get across backing up or i'm sorry verifying your backups and it's it's night and day so uh yeah check your shit people so basically these are backups backups should have pretty much everything it should not have anything sensitive. I mean, just pretty much all these, the, the, the list here. Um, yeah. So thank you. <laughs>